of Timothy, 2 Timothy. We've been preaching a series of messages entitled The Importance of the Grace of God. The Importance of the Grace of God. In 2 Timothy, or excuse me, 2 Thessalonians, that's where we'll be first. This is where the Lord birthed uh, this series of messages in my heart. I haven't even counted how many that we've done or how many there is left. I just take them one at a time. But in 2 Thessalonians chapter number 3 and verse number 16, the Apostle Paul said, Now the Lord of peace himself give you peace always by all means he said the Lord be with you all and then in verse 17 he said the salutation of Paul with mine own hand which is the token in every epistle so I write then he said the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all amen go to the book of 2 Timothy chapter 4 with me tonight that's where the message is going to come from tonight. My wife, we asked this morning, I, I wasn't sure, and uh, I really wasn't sure if, it, if there was uh, 21 verses in the last chapter of the book of Revelation or if there was 22. And so I had my wife while I was teaching in the teen class to look it up. Look over there just a moment with me. This is amazing, I think. In Revelation chapter 22, in verse number 20, the Bible said, He that he which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so come, Lord Jesus. This reminds me of something that crossed my mind a while ago while the choir was singing and I was sitting on the front bench. Let me ask you this question. Is there anywhere you'd rather be right now if Jesus were to come? Is there a place anywhere in the world you'd rather be than right where you are if Jesus were to come? Amen. But look at verse 21. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Brother Ralph, it looks like old Brother John got a dose of that too, didn't he? Yeah. Amen. Paul signs all of his epistles out with the grace of God. And John the Revelator did the same thing. I thought that was interesting. I didn't, hadn't picked up on that. You can learn some things from your wife if you listen to her. Amen. It's hard, men, but it's true. Amen. You can learn some things. Tonight, what I want to look at is the importance of the grace of God in preaching. The importance of the grace of God in preaching. You'll see it with me if you'll go with me through 2 Timothy chapter 4 and uh, these verses. Let's pray together. Father, thank you tonight for the word of God and thank you for our people thank you for the testimonies of your people Lord I'm glad tonight we didn't come here to brag on ourselves but Lord we come here tonight to lift up holy 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 high and holy the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ the name that's above every name not the name of Jesus every knee should bow every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Would you help us now for a few moments tonight, Lord, as we try to glean from the Scripture, Lord, what you've put in our heart in the study. God will give you glory, for we ask it in Jesus' precious name. And amen and amen. I'll give you tonight some things the Lord spoke to my heart about as I studied this chapter about the grace of God in preaching. By the way, beloved, I believe Paul was a man that never got over the grace of God. I don't believe Paul ever thought that he deserved the position that he had as an apostle or a preacher of the gospel of the Lord Jesus. 
Turn with me back, please, to 1 Timothy chapter number 1 for just a moment. The Bible said there, according to the glorious gospel in verse 11 of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust, he said, I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who hath enabled me, for he hath counted me faithful, putting me in the ministry. I believe it would be easy for a man that's maybe preached for several decades to forget what it was like when God put him in the ministry, when God trusted him with the gospel of the Lord Jesus. But I tell you tonight, I believe by the grace of God, beloved, God's men never forget where they come from. Paul said, by the grace of God, I am what I am. He said, if you're going to talk about sinners, he said, I'm the chiefest of sinners. But he said, if you want to talk about saints, he said, I'm less than the least of all the saints. And I think it's important tonight. I'll give you, first of all, tonight, we need God's grace when we look at the opportunity that he gives us in preaching. The Bible said in verse 1, I charge thee, chapter 4, 2 Timothy, verse 1, before God and the Lord Jesus, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom, he tells Timothy, preach the word, be instant in season and out of season. He said, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. I want to tell you tonight, beloved, listen, I believe in the grace of God in preaching that we ought to be thanking him for every opportunity that he gives us to stand and open this book. You say, Pastor, are you preaching to preachers? No, Paul is preaching to Timothy, his young preacher, amen? And I'm sharing with you that Paul understands, no wonder he signs out every one of his epistles with the grace of God. He knows that if Timothy is going to do what God has called Timothy to do, he's going to need the grace of God just like he himself needed the grace of God. Paul said, woe is me if I preach not the gospel. Paul said, one had taught us not to think of ourselves more highly than we ought to think. And I think those things are important tonight in the life of the preacher. I was thinking as God was dealing in my heart about a situation when I took a church and there was about 165 there when I took the church in the spring and I was excited about it. I knew it was the will of God for me to take the church. But when I took the church, a bunch of folk left the church. There was a division in the church. It's just the way it was, amen. I've said this and I'll say it from the pulpit. I believe if Jesus was the candidate and one group found out that the other group was for him, they'd have been again him, amen, and vice versa. But God put it in my heart in prayer one Sunday afternoon to take the church. And so I took the church. Well, about six, eight months later, it was December, it was cold, and I looked up at the numbers board, and there was 115 on the board. I can remember going home and throwing a pity party. I got down to pray, and I said, God, what's going on? I thought you brought me here to build a work, not to tear it all to pieces, not to tear it down. And God whispered to me in prayer. He said, son, do you remember when you used to dream of getting to preach to 100 people? He broke my heart, Brother Jimmy. I said, God, I remember. I remember just laying in bed and weeping and crying and waiting on God to open a door. He, God said to me, you've got 115. Shut up and preach. I tell you, I went back to the pulpit with a different attitude. I had been sick at my stomach because people were picking me apart like a buzzard. But I told him, I'm going to preach. If you like it, you like it. If you don't, I can't help you. But I'm going to preach what God gave me. Amen. And God, in his grace, took the church from right there to over 300 people. Amen. It wasn't a preacher. It was the word of God going forth. Amen. And doing what God wanted it to do among his people. I was talking to a lady that goes to another church today. And she said there was a time when our church was running 400 people. And she said, now we're doing good if we get 100 people. And I'm going to tell you something, beloved. Listen to me. You don't have to believe what I'm saying. But the closer we get to the coming of the Lord, the Bible said there's going to be a great falling away. Amen. I'm telling you, I thank my God tonight. God's given me a little stick on Amen. I'm going to stick to this book and stick to the stuff and just preach the word of God 
God like it is to men and women, boys and girls like they are and by the grace of God, it'll get the job done. That's what Paul is telling Timothy. He's saying, Timothy, preach the word, son. They don't need what you think. They don't need what Dr. Bottle Stopper thinks. They need the word of God. And every one of us tonight can say amen. We need the word of God in our heart and in our life. And so there's the opportunity. I see the grace of God just in having an opportunity uh, to preach the word of God uh, tonight. But then let me give you this. I see the need for the grace of God because there's an opposition to preaching. Beloved, listen, surely you know this tonight. This world is not our home. And this world is at enmity with this gospel, at enmity with this book, and at enmity with God's people. You say, Pastor, you know, these young people tonight, thank God these young people singing, these young people taking care of the babies. And I forgot that announcement, Emily. Here it comes, honey. Emily wants me to uh, help you to understand that she and three other of our young ladies are gonna be running a nursery uh, for the uh, Valentine banquet. And she got a sign-up sheet out there. She don't want you to sign your name. Sign the baby's name, amen, the youngin's name. And they're gonna take care of the baby. Don't you think that's wonderful? Say amen. I think it's a wonderful thing to have this many young people. Uh, listen, listen, listen. This world's not for these young people. This world's trying to devour these young people. But thank God. Uh, listen, the preacher's going to face opposition. His people's going to face opposition. But God is showing us the grace of God in this chapter as we face opposition to preaching. Look at verse 3 through verse number 5. The time will come where they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. They shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Look at this now. He said, but watch thou in all things. Endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist and make full proof of thy ministry. I believe God wants us to see tonight. Listen, I think a person, listen, just dreaming. Uh, Brother Chris, if, if you think you're gonna get called to preach and boy, everything, everybody's gonna be for you and everybody just gonna love on you, I'm gonna tell you something right now, beloved. If you preach this old book, ask Brother Jack, he's in heaven, amen. Uh, but ask him tonight if they wasn't some that despised it, amen. Uh, listen, I thank God for God's people that love the truth uh, and you can't preach it too straight for them. Uh, uh, Brother Mitchell, uh, beloved, was a man that would preach it straight, amen, uh, and thank God for that, uh, and thank God for Brother Jack, and thank God for Brother Crucenberry years ago that stood up and preached hell hot and heaven sweet, uh, and God began to wring my heart out and show me that I was one of those religious wrecks on the highway to hell, amen. Uh, there's opposition to the preaching the Bible talks about here. Look at verse 10. For Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is departed unto Thessalonica, and the Cretans to Galatia, Titus to Dalmatia. You see, the Bible talking about opposition to the preaching. Look at verse 14. Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil. The Lord reward him according to his works. Let me say you something. Paul didn't preach one thing in the book of Romans and then do another thing in the book of Timothy. Paul said, listen, listen. He, he said, don't you recompense evil for evil. Right? Ain't that right? He said, be good to him. He said, in doing so, you'll heap coals of fire upon his head. And so Paul said, the Lord reward him according to his works. Paul said, it's out of my hands. Look at verse 15. Of whom be thou ware also, for he hath greatly withstood our words. And the Bible said in verse 16, at my first answer, no man stood with me, but all men forsook me. I pray God that it may not be laid to their charge. I thank God tonight that Paul understood there was gonna be opposition in his preaching. Watch this now. Not only was there gonna be opposition from without, but there was gonna be opposition from within. 
You've heard God's men say this over and over, and if you'll be honest, you'll say the same thing. The person you have the most trouble with is that one you look at in the mirror every morning. Amen. The man of God's not only facing opposition from without, but he's facing opposition from within. That's why Paul said the things that I would do, I don't do, and the things I would not do, I do. But listen, we don't need to leave it there. He said, Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of this death? He said, I thank God through Jesus Christ. Yes, there's a war going on and a battle going on and spiritual warfare is going on. But thank God there's victory in the Lord Jesus Christ. Chapter number eight, a lot of people read chapter seven and don't read the first verse in chapter eight. There is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus, to them who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit amen thank God yes there's a battle going on but that's not an excuse to do the wrong thing God wants us to know we've got the Holy Ghost living in us and a Holy Bible in front of us and Paul is telling Timothy son there's opposition but you can make it amen you can make it for the glory of God the grace of God in preaching we see the opportunity in preaching in this chapter We see the opposition to preaching in this chapter. But I want to give you this in closing tonight. Don't get too excited. Amen. But I want to give you this, the overcoming in preaching tonight. Listen, we can overcome. You say, Paul is the man that wrote these words. We're more than conquerors through him that loved us. Paul is the one that wrote these words. Thanks be to God, which always causes us to triumph in our Lord Jesus Christ, amen, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, Beloved, listen tonight, we're not fighting for the victory, but we're fighting from the victory. It's already been won at Calvary, amen. Thank God for that tonight. Let me show you some things here tonight in this, this text that I believe will help us with the grace of God in overcoming in the preacher's life and in the preaching of the word of God. Number one, It's a man, this preacher is a man with faith. You see, look at verse number seven. The Bible said, I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I've kept the faith. You say, Pastor, why did you start with faith? I'm going to tell you what, before there's ever going to be a fight, there's got to be faith. There's got to be, listen listen to me. You may not understand what I'm about to say, but there are scores of men standing in pulpits like this that do not know Jesus in the free pardon of sin. You say, Pastor, you ain't got no Bible for that. How about this? The Word of God said, Beloved, listen, that Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. And no marvel if his ministers also be transformed. You say, Pastor, you mean to tell me that somebody can put a Bible under their arm? That's exactly what I mean to tell you. And come to a place like this and yet not be saved by the grace of God? That is exactly what I mean to tell you, beloved. Listen, uh, there's some people that say, boy, that'd be a good uh, occupation. I'm telling you what, if God ain't called a man, he needs to go the other way as fast as he can. Amen. Uh, I believe this book uh, uh, teaches us, beloved, that it takes a man with faith that man needs to have faith when it comes to his conversion but that man needs to have faith when it comes to his calling that God has called him to preach the word of God I believe Paul understood that he's encouraging Timothy amen look at it with me some of you looking at me like a calf looking at a new gate look at 2 Corinthians just a moment let me read these verses to you 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 need to see them underline them Mark them, amen. The Bible said in 2 Corinthians chapter number 11 and verse number 13, for such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. I'm gonna tell you something, beloved. It's one thing when God transforms a man, but it's another thing when he transforms himself. 
Amen. Transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of life. Therefore it is of no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their works. You say, Pastor, how in the world can we know them? I tell you, there's only one way I know. That's this precious old book right here. I'll tell you something else, beloved. The spirit of the living God will bear witness. Somebody say amen right there. I believe, beloved, with all of my heart, Paul is telling Timothy, it's important if you're gonna be an overcomer, you be a man with faith. You need to know you've been saved son and you need to know that God has called you into the ministry amen oh thank God for that and then it's secondly it's a man that'll fight you say pastor fight that's exactly right the Bible said in the book of Jude earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints I'm telling you beloved listen to me there's men every day laying this book down, preaching and picking up another one. There's men every day that don't have no problem. Uh, but listen, beloved, with changing the songs in the song book. There's men every day, beloved, that don't have a problem with strobe lights and the fog coming out of the stage. Uh, anything to draw a crowd. Uh, I'm telling you, beloved, listen, Paul said, I've not preached with enticing words of men's wisdom, but in power and in demonstration of the Holy Ghost. And he's raising this young man, Timothy, to understand, beloved, you can overcome, Timothy, but you're going to have to fight the good fight of faith. Amen. You're going to have to have faith and you're going to have to fight in this world that we live in. Paul said, so fight I not as one that beateth the air, but I keep under my body. I bring it into subjection, lest by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Let me give you this tonight. If we're going to overcome, it's got to be a man with faith, a man that'll fight. But thirdly, uh, there's a man, it has to be a man that'll forgive. You say, Pastor, where did you get that in the chapter? Look at verse number 11. He said, only Luke is with me. And then he said, take Mark. Do y'all remember when there was a sharp contention between the apostle Paul and Mark? You know what's going on in this verse of scripture right here? Brother Houston, Paul has forgiven John Mark. And now he says, Bring old Mark with you because he's profitable to thee and to me. I'm telling you, beloved, listen, if a man's going to make it in the ministry, he better learn how to forgive. The opposition will come, but he better learn how to forgive. And you better learn this also. You better learn, beloved, that some people are never going to ask you to forgive. You're just going to have to forgive them. And go, I, I've, I've read the Bible. You show me where anybody was standing in front of the cross, said, forgive me. There was one beside of him, the thief, but that crowd down there when Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. So show me where anybody asked Stephen uh, for, to forgive them. But no, Stephen had his eyes on Jesus, amen. Uh, and Stephen, he, he said, Lord, uh, lay not this sin to their charge. That was a man of God that learned, I can't hold things in my heart against people. I've got to be a forgiving individual, amen, if I want God to forgive me. Beloved, what a blessing that is tonight. Then not only that, look at verse 17 and verse number 18. The importance of the grace of God in preaching. There's the opportunity. We see grace in the opportunity. We see grace. God gives us grace in the preaching. My wife will tell you it's the grace of God that, that, that along the way, it's the grace of God. I used to be a lot stronger than I am right now. And it's the grace of God that I allowed God to break my heart instead of me breaking somebody's jaw. Did you hear what I said? It's the grace of God. And the devil would have liked nothing more. He'd have liked nothing more for me to rear back and give him everything I've got. Say amen. I'm just telling you, beloved, then there you go. You say, Pastor, what's the big deal? What did Paul say was one of the qualifications? Not a brawler. Ain't that right? Y'all believe all them qualifications matter? I do, amen. 
not a brawler. God's not looking for somebody to fight with his fist. God's looking for somebody to fight in that spiritual warfare, amen, and to turn it over to the Lord when the enemy comes along, amen. But watch this, a man that will follow. Look at verse 17 and verse number 18. This is important. Notwithstanding, Paul said, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me that by me the preaching might be fully known and that all the Gentiles might hear. And he said, I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion and the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom to whom be glory forever and ever. I believe that man, beloved, listen, that God is going to use, understands the need of the grace of God that he might continue to follow the Lord, that he understands the Lord stood with him when nobody else would. Amen. I don't believe there's ever been a time in my ministry where I could say there wasn't anybody standing with me. You say, Pastor, how do you know that? Well, for one thing, there's a woman sitting right over there that has stood with me every step of the way. I'm telling you, there have been times in my ministry when God was changing course and she never, never one time, it looked like, it looked like when I went with Rock of Ages, before that it looked like I might be going to pastor the church I saved in, didn't it, honey? And we was going to pick up. My boy stood on the front porch of my house and shook his head back and forth. He said, Dad, I don't understand. You fixed this house. You've done all this work. And now you're going to walk off and leave it. I told him, I said, son, you need to understand that a man's life does not consist of the things which he possesseth. I said, son, I've got to follow the Lord. I said, son, I want to hear him say, well done, one day after a while. Amen. And my teenage boy, Brother Chris, you'd love this. He said, don't worry, Dad, you will. Oh, hallelujah. We've got to be willing to follow the Lord wherever he leads. Amen. And then tonight, not only is it a man, if we're going to overcome with faith, a man that will fight, a man that will forgive, a man that will follow, but get this tonight, it's the man that will finish. The Bible said here, I fought a good fight. He said, I finished my course. Hallelujah. That ought to be the desire of every one of God's men. I, I, I believe, you know, I've heard stories about Brother Jack. I, I, I've heard stories recently that I didn't know about his blood pressure, about, it, about him turning blue so to speak when he was preaching and things like that and uh, I, Brother Houston told me uh, some stories about ham biscuits I'm sure that wasn't helping the blood pressure any amen but uh, you know what I believe I believe a long time before y'all knew he knew that's one of the reasons he wouldn't lead the church off in debt head over heels amen he knew that his race was about run, amen. And I thank God, beloved, listen, God's men can finish. They can finish the course that God has laid out for them. He's a man that'll finish. He said, I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I've kept the faith. In other words, I didn't just get in with faith, but honey, I've rode that faith train all the way to the end. A lot of people think you get saved and that's the end. No, you get saved, that's just the beginning. Amen? Then you get up and you walk with God in faith. The Damascus Road, that wasn't the end for Paul. The end, look at verse 8. Henceforth there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, not to me only, but to all them also that love is appearing. I believe Paul was looking for Jesus, don't you? I believe he was living for Jesus. And you know what I believe? This young man, that he had the privilege. Paul told us that Timothy was his son in the faith. I believe Paul had been instrumental in leading Timothy to Christ. I believe Timothy's mother and his grandmother 
had taught him the word of God along the way, amen, and that, that, that scripture was able to make him wise unto salvation. And I believe that same scripture, beloved, is now what Timothy is being called upon to preach. The same scripture that got him in was the same scripture that he would be preaching the rest of his life. So we see the grace of God, the importance of the grace of God in preaching. i say this to you tonight, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart. I've said this for years. Everybody ought to teach one Sunday school class. Everybody ought to teach one Sunday school class. It changed the way you pray for your teacher. Everybody, beloved, listen, ought to have to prepare one lesson. I believe it would change the way that you pray for your teacher. I believe also, beloved, listen, it would change the way that you pray for your preacher. Amen. Listen, what I preached this morning, I told Brother Don this afternoon, I thought I was coming to the pulpit this morning when I laid down last night to preach over Ma- out of Matthew chapter 11 over there where Jesus said, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. And I don't know when I'll get to preach that, but God will let me preach it sometime, I believe. He gave it to me uh, as I was reading. But you know, when you wake up at 2.30 in the morning, let me say something about the preacher. The mailman down on his run at a convenient time. Sometimes God... And listen, God's men understand something. You better not lay there in the bed and God deal with your heart about something, roll over and go back to sleep. Because this old flesh will wake up about 8 o'clock and it's gone. You better get up and you better pay attention, amen, to what God is saying. So how many of you all were sleeping at 2.30 this morning? How many were sleeping at 3.30 this morning? How many were sleeping at 4.30 this morning? That's when I was trying to get back to sleep. But I'm going to tell you something. You say, Pastor, you complaining? No, I thank God that my God has access to my heart and he can speak to me whenever he wants to. I belong to him, amen, and I need him. If I'm going to come to this pulpit and give you what God gives me, I need him first to give it to me, amen. And you know, I'll be honest with you, I left here this morning and I felt a little bit defeated. But you know what I found out along the way? Sometimes when I think I ain't doing too good, he's doing real good. And sometimes when I think I'm doing pretty good, ain't doing nothing at all. It's all in his hands, amen. We're supposed to preach the word, be instant in season and out of season. The grace of God. Pray for your pastor. Pray for other preachers, other pastors, evangelists, amen. Pray that God would help the man of God, wherever he is, that's standing true to the word of God. I do believe the devil's got preachers too. I believe that. The scripture teaches it, and I believe it, amen. Let me say something. Anybody that's standing and teaching things or preaching things that are contrary to this book, You'll never make me believe that they're a man of God. God never contradicts himself. Amen. People are telling folks, well, if you'll just join the church, sign a card, get dipped in a water hole, just do this, give so much money, sow a seed. I'm going to tell you something right now. This book said you must be born again. This book's right. To be born again means to be born from above. That means the Holy Ghost has to be involved in that birth, amen. There's an incorruptible seed, the word of God that lives and abides forever. How many glad you come tonight? Thank you for coming tonight. I mean that. Pray for us, and God willing, we'll be back in here uh, on Wednesday night. And uh, is that sheet out there already, Emily? Okay, amen. I was telling Emily a while ago when she was standing in the line, I was just reminiscing. Uh, we were in that revival meeting over at Brother Eddie Smith's, and I was just praying. And I'll tell you who I wasn't praying for. I wasn't praying for Emily. I had no reason to believe that Emily wasn't saved. But here come Emily, sliding in that altar. I told her a while ago, God said, save. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I remember one Sunday morning, uh, Hannah was leaving 
But God wouldn't let her get out. I don't, I don't even think you made it out the outside door, did you? Here she comes. She turned around. I'm telling you, there's a good God in heaven that loves his people, amen, that loves sinners. I wish I could love them as much as he does, amen. But I want you to know tonight, there's a God in heaven that loves you tonight. He wants you to know that you know that you know that you have eternal life. He wants you to serve him tonight. He wants you to be happy tonight and have joy unspeakable and full of glory, which reminds me tonight, we need to pray for Joy's mama. She's been having some real, real anxious days and anxiety, and uh, God willing, we'll get to see her before too long, her precious mama. But you remember Joy's mommy, would you please? How old is your mommy now, Sister Joy? 87? Wow. Amen. How in the world does she have a 21-year-old girl? <laughs> you liked that, didn't you, Bob? That ought to get me a cupcake or something. So